Okay, so welcome to the Lungasad ritual. This is the first of the harvest rituals. The, the three to come are Lunasad and uh, Mabon and Samhain, um, all opening ourselves up to the, the blessings of the hard work that has been done over the course of the year. And so I don't know if you're able to hear in that song from um, Dave the Mar Bard, Lugnasad, um, that I play just coming into this, but it's like hearing um, the call of the earth and the bounty of the earth, um, and also recognizing that there is in, in the harvest, there's, we're starting to look at the waning of the year and the things that we're, we're letting go of. And so in this, you know, the way that, that I like to work with the psycho-spiritual aspect of the wheel of the year and the cycle of the seasons is recognizing that this is a time of, of, of pride, of, you know, being able to recognize what our gifts are. Um, when you think about, you know, coming into a time of harvest, that what are the strengths that we're bringing to the task? And so this is a time at Lugnasad, you know, when we're looking at, okay, we've been working really hard all year. There have been things that we've been focused on um, bringing into fruition, bringing into harvest. What are the skills that we have brought to that task? You know, what are the things that we've learned about ourselves um, that we can really anchor in on, that we can really remember and hold on to? Because as we move through, you know, the the waning time of the year, we're starting to let go and let go and let go until we do, not too long from now, come to a place of stillness where we will start to focus on what we're bringing in, you know, what seeds are we planting the next time around. But this is the time that we're harvesting those seeds. This is the time that we're, we're putting them aside for safekeeping. And that's also looking at the seeds of the self, you know, the gifts of the self, the, the things that we know about ourselves that we're also tucking aside, that we're going to be keeping safe over, you know, the cold winter months to bring them out again in the spring when we start to, to plant them and put them into work. So this ritual of creating, you know, well, technically it's called a God's eye, but it's, it's this, this third eye, this visioning self, this illumined self, this ritual is an opportunity to take some time to really think about what the process of this past cycle has been from the winter solstice to now, what you have planted, what you have cultivated, what you have worked towards, what you are about to harvest, what seeds from that harvest you want to hold on to, to take with you into the whole next cycle, grand cycle, which will happen again. And even more, to be able to um, to be able to be aware of perhaps some of the beliefs that you have been made aware of as you have moved through the previous cycles that are not serving, that those can be let go of. What beliefs, the positive beliefs, the awarenesses of self, the, the strengths of self, um, that I'm just going to move here, um, that you want to weave into this illumined vision, into um, what you are crafting, because that is the vision that's going to carry you forward. So that is the focus of this ritual. And moving into it, I will, I will ask now if you want to, um, to turn off cameras. I'm going to share screen again. I just hope, can I get that? I want to get, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. And. So. 
start by focusing on breath. by finding ourselves in the place of sacred space. And so with each of four breaths, start by bringing your awareness to each of four directions. The four directions that surround you and the elements that are aligned with them. So where we start in the north, start by just facing, focusing on, holding the intention of the direction of north and the element of earth. So as you breathe into that place, no, earth is the land, the home, the foundation of community, nurturing and solid, stable and firm, full of endurance and strength. This is the base upon which we build community and we build solid foundation in our lives with powers of earth. We give thanks. With the next breath, move your awareness, shift your focus, or gaze upon the direction of east and call to mind the element of air. Air is the soul, the breath of life in community. Wisdom and intuition, the knowledge we share. Air carries troubles away. It clarifies, sharpens. With powers of air, we give thanks. And bring your awareness to the direction of south or turn your gaze to that place. In the south, we welcome the element of fire and may the powers of fire bless us. Fire is the heat the fertility of action, the bringer of change, strong will and energy, the power to get things done. Fire is the passion that drives us and moves us. So with powers of fire, give thanks and welcome. And finally, in the directions that surround us, bring your awareness to the direction of west, in the element of water. Welcoming water with its cleansing, purifying, the ability to wash away ill will, ill strife, 
anything of want. Water helps to keep the community whole, keep us refreshed. So we welcome water. the powers of water to allow us to flow. And feeling all the directions around us and all the elements around us with the next breaths bring your awareness to the below and the above as you breathe into the below, almost a deeper foundation than earth itself. It is the foundation of the earthbound material plane. It is all that has been over time and time and time. It is the history that lives in the land in the rocks and minerals, the bones of the ancestors. So breathe into the below and know that you are supported by all of time that has come before, that has walked and moved and lived on this earth. And then breathe into the above and expand into the limitless breadth of the cosmic plane. And a whole other expansion into timelessness that goes back eons upon eons upon eons even further than this earth to the very beginning of time itself. To find yourself with your next breath in that place in the very center, the above, the below, all the elements around and in the center this place of spirit of ether of the divine acknowledge the presence of the divine if there's a statue on your altar or the divine within your heart And know that you, yourself, are also in this place of sacred center. You too hold this space at the very hub of the universe. You yourself are the meeting place of spirit above and matter below. And the magic that surrounds. And from this place of center, take this moment to light the candle on your altar. And as the light from that candle begins to glow, bring your awareness to your third eye. Falling in the sea. 
head touch you. Just breathing into the third eye, begin to focus on the sense of the you that has traveled far in this life. And you have experienced many things. You have accomplished many things. You may have felt that you failed at many things. And certainly that you have learned from many things. And as you allow that awareness of all the successes and all the challenges, the highs, and the lows, all that you have encountered over the many years of your life thus far. Take the two cut stalks of wheat and insert the two pieces of wire into their hollow centers and cross them so you create two sturdy arms. If you are working with sticks, just Create a cross with the sticks. As you think about all that you have gone through, you are creating the foundation for your vision. So you cross one stalk over another or one stick over another and take a piece of string or it can be a piece of wire but bind them so that they are somewhat sturdy together forming a cross it's almost an x that is a bit reflective of that honey symbol of vision. And when you have that, you're just gonna take some time to start to weave around, whether you're using wheat or whether you are using ribbon. You cross over and wind around and then it's always moving moon-wise. So from the right, then turn it around the stalk on the left. You can even then turn your stalk so that then from that right, you wind it around the stalk on the left. You can turn it again from that right, turn it around to the stalk on the left. So you're just weaving over and around, over and around, over and around. as you do just be aware of what's happening in your third eye be aware of what's happening in your thoughts be aware of what memories are coming up what remembrances or lessons or insights and particularly be aware of any negative beliefs that come in. If any do, take a moment, pause, breathe it away, let it go. Open yourself to replacing it with a positive reflection of yourself, something that can sustain a lumen vision and then 
continue. So we're going to take some time to do this.
take a little bit more time, maybe about another minute. And just if you haven't finished your God's eye, just know that you can come back to it. Just bring it to a place where it feels like it will hold the shape that it's in. And just take a bit of time Oop. just to get clear on what it is. That is a main message, perhaps, that you have taken away. Look at mm, how the God's eye came together. I will say that mine started off very solid, then got a little wacky, and then kind of <laughs> found its shape again. <laughs> Which perhaps is a little bit like how our life is. It can start off a certain way and get a little wacky. And perhaps we find our way to finding that shape again. Like this thing to focus on, the thing to connect with, is not so much the perception or the expectation of what it's supposed to look like, but the energy that we bring to the making of it. The thing to connect with in terms of awakening that illumined vision is finding the way to see ourselves in the kindest and most supportive way possible because that is the thing that is going to make the difference with how we move into whatever it is that we are creating, whatever it is that we are planting, whatever it is that we are harvesting. It is that vision of ourselves. You know, so coming back to that, those key archetypal themes of this time, very much see it as being about the way in which we can bring pride to our lives and the vision of ourselves and not from that place of, of ego and inflation but pride that is like this is me and and I accept this and I embrace this and I share this as I often say, as I remember was once reflected to me, you know, well, you're full of yourself. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not full of myself. Then who's going to be? So we each need to be full of ourselves. So take a moment, hold that God's eye, that vision, illumined vision, that four-armed reflection of that illumined honey of vision. And as you gaze upon it, Allow yourself to see through its reflection. If that were directing your vision, then what is it that would be illumined in that vision? What is it that you see moving forward? What is the future that you are moving forward into that is informed by the gifts of the lessons of the past? And as you do, 
I'm going to invite you to also think of a number <laughs> between one and five, because I've got some card reflections at the end of this. I have five different cards. And just breathe into this space once more. Open yourself to the blessings of Lugnasard, of Laumas, of the first harvest. And not only that, we are also under the energy of a full moon. Not only that, um, apparently it's a super moon. So there's a lot of stuff going on today. So it is a really potent time to hold that vision of knowing who you are, knowing who you are and allowing that to be the energy that moves you forward. And with that, And with a number in your mind, we'll now take a moment to move through the directions once more, taking in the blessings of this space and this time spent, and thanking all of those energies that supported us in it. So starting once more in the north, and take a breath, connect with that solid foundation of earth, and feel that move through you and anchor in you as you thank north, the direction of north, the element of earth, for pro providing that solid stability through this ritual. And turning to the east, the element of air. Take a breath in and thank air for providing that clarity, that sort of fresh, breeze of awareness, blowing away any dusty thoughts, and focusing on south, and as you thank the direction of south, the element of, of fire, you can blow out or tamp out the flame of your candle and thank fire for that brilliant light, that force of will, that energy of passion, the constancy of determination to move through the challenging bits. And moving to west and connecting with that flow of water and thanking both west and water for allowing that emotion to move through our hearts, connecting us to what it is that we are experiencing. And then being aware of that above and that below. And thanking both of those spaces for holding us in that immensity of the mystery of all that was and all that will be. As you take another breath, put your hands on your heart 
and feel all of that which you have felt as it moves through you as well as above so below as within so without and know that you are a gift of spirit on earth and what you do matters Who you are is precious. With a final exhale, we release all of that, come back to your space. And I will. off this there we go so you can keep your cameras off I'm still recording um, but I'm going to share the um, the card so the intuitive tool that we use for cycle six is the I Ching which I love because it's very binary very light, you know, the, uh, um, the heads or the tails, <laughs> the solid line or the broken line, but how you put it together creates such an enormous variety of reflections and, um, and then whether it's a solid, um, sort of a solid line or a changing line can create all these other panels. So, Although it looks very simple, it's got so much depth to it, which I think is sometimes what happens in our minds as well. It's very simple, but there's so much complexity there. So I have five I Ching cards here from the visionary I Ching cards. So in order, number one, if you chose number one, nourishment. It is mountain above and thunder below. And this is the card. Let's see if I can get it right in close. That is the card for nourishment. It is hexagram number 27. So I'm going to read them all out, show them, and then I'm going to stop the recording and then we can have a bit of a chat and I can read a little bit more of the um, description of what they are. Um, but just for, for this, I'm just going to show the cards and um, so the people who are watching another time can see them. Oh boy. So for those of you who chose I Ching number two, it is pushing upwards. Look at that seed pushing up. So it is earth above and wind below. So it's, and that is hexagram number 46. Number three is endurance. And that is thunder above and wind below. So there's an intensification there. And it is hexagram number 32. Um, if you don't have an I Ching, I'm sure you can Google what is the meaning of hexagram and it'll give you the little gua, the, the poem of it and a further explanation as well. <sighs> Interesting. Number four is the darkening of the light which is a little bit of like, you know, we're starting to go into, starting to get dark. Er, this is earth above and fire below. It is hexagram number 36. And the last. Oh, 
Number five is shock. Hexagram number 51. Oh boy. Thunder above, thunder below. So there is, there is some change happening for those of you who have chosen number five. Tiffany? Yes? Yes. Can I ask you a question? Yes, of course. What was number two again? Number two is pushing upward. Okay. If you can see there's a picture there. Yeah. That, that one is earth above and wind below. So it's yeah. like this need coming up to the surface. Got it. Thank you. Did you pick that one? Yeah. So did I. It is you. Sisters. <laughs> uh, <yay. laughs> yeah. So So for those of you who are joining us in Zoom land and for those of you who are here as well, uh the blessings of Lugnasad upon you. I, I wish, I wish that you see yourself in the coming weeks, how wonderfully, beautifully, spectacularly, clearly that others probably see you as we see others far more kindly, I think, than we see ourselves. And may you see yourself with the vision, that same vision of those who love you so dearly. And know, as I said, you, you are a blessing. You are a wonder. We are wonder workers. And there is so much gloriousness coming into fruition, coming to harvest. And may you start to open your hearts to all of those blessings. So thank you for sharing this space. And we will see you in the different places that we see you. So I will stop the recording.